Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Nail Logical podcast. Today, Christine, we're playing the party game, Would You Rather? Is this a party? Hello, everyone. Welcome to our party. It's a game with no winners, only losers, and you oh. can play along with us in the comments section down below. I love below. that for us. Would you rather is just like, would you rather fight a duck the size of a horse or would you rather fight a hundred horse horses the this is the size of a duck? Oh. Do you have an answer? Uh, I didn't understand the question. Can you, can you repeat the question? <laughs> this is going to be good. Wait, so people can play along with us? They can in their minds. Yeah. Yeah. Or in the comments. Yeah, go ahead. That'll be fun. Yeah, we'll see you there. All right, let's just get right into well, it. Well, we asked people on our socials, on Simply Pod Logical socials, mm. to submit their versions of Would You Rather, or sometimes people call this game like this or that, I guess. Same mm. idea. But yeah, we asked you guys to submit. So there's a lot of uh, questions that are themed for us specifically. <laughs> a lot of like tea or menchie or, you know, stuff like yeah. that. But then there's some more general ones that we hope, yeah, will be fun for everyone to play along with. Right, Menchie? Right. All right. First one, Christine, from Steph Chambers. Would you rather be forced to sing along to every song you hear or dance every time you hear a song? Dance, obviously. Really? Yeah. Think of all Have the Have you sing heard my singing? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Everyone Hello, has heard my me. singing. <laughs> it's pretty awful. <laughs> but like think of all the places where you hear music come on, you know, walk into a grocery store, they're playing music over the speakers. You just want to start dancing down the aisle you just want to start singing well yeah just like singing to myself yeah, walking but down the aisle if someone's dancing like i can choose to look away but i can't choose to like stop listening to them it'd be so annoying if someone kept singing <laughs> wait for an observer yeah yeah like but you're, you're the me. person doing the action you don't have yeah, to worry but I'd about rather other make it easier for the people around me to make the decision <laughs> to not have to deal with me so they could just be like this person's dancing that's weird that's so I'm considerate next. of you but do, do you think it's more obnoxious to like sing quietly down the aisles or I guess you could also dance in a way that's a little like I don't subtle. I, yeah, I guess maybe I'm judging this based on what I think is more annoying. I think it would be more annoying if someone would not shut the fuck up. <laughs> but what would be worse for you? You're the one in the situation. Oh, okay, yeah. Would you rather you just hate singing? You probably get a, like your throat would hurt after a while. I guess you'd get tired of dancing, but I feel like, I don't know, I kind of dance around the house anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Christine would rather. I do dance around the house, right? You do dance. Christine's yeah. a good dancer. Don't sleep on Christine's dancing skills. We've seen you dancing a little bit of Britney Spears. Who? What? All, all, your, all your dance Why? moves, I think, were like you did dance lessons when you were younger, right? Yeah. During so like that pop era. It was a lot of dance, hip hop, and that definition They called is, it hip hop? They called it hip hop. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. That, that definition is based on uh, what, to what was Spears. taught, you know, 15 <laughs> years ago to teenagers. Yeah. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but when I was like, uh, like 11 years old or something, I took a break dancing class. How'd you do? I was so embarrassed. I just like refused to <laughs> you dance. You never took the class again. I just again. never danced. He never returned to that <laughs> class, everyone. I just, I was the kid awkwardly standing there watching other people break dance, too embarrassed to dance. So would you I'm rather break dance or sing? I'm just too self-conscious to dance, I think. But you're okay with singing? Yeah, like I'm not a good singer, but I'm, I'm okay. I'll get okay. up and do some karaoke. But that's good. We'll be a good duet. I'll sing some Taylor You'll Swift sing, for you. I'll dance. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll sing and you could dance down the aisles to that. All right. Okay. Ooh, Menchie. All right. Next one. Uh, from the real Julia Resnick, would you rather have the body of a monkey, but the mind intelligence of a human, or have the body of a human, but you're stuck with the mind of a monkey? Who put this question in? You put this question <laughs> I in? This a boo-boo. Okay. A you answer first. This question is obviously for you. So I think I would rather have the human mind in the in the body of a monkey, and then I would be like Caesar, leader of the planet of the apes, rise against and uh, you know overthrow humanity. But would you be treated poorly because everyone just looks at you like a monkey? So you'd have to deal with that, presumably. I don't did, know. Did you ignore the part where I said I would overthrow oh, humanity? Well, would you be successful? <laughs> I don't know. There's a difference between like wanting to do that and being successful. Have you heard of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Christine? That's a movie, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll explain that movie to you another time. It's old. Yeah, they've rebooted it a few times. Okay. Planet of the Apes movies? Should no, you you've never that seen to it. Me on the next we could, we could do, I like the Planet of the <laughs> I, Apes movies. I feel like I've seen it. You You did it. They blew it up. No? Famous movie scene? No? 
Maybe. Okay, what, what would, you, would you rather be a, a smart monkey? I would rather be a smart monkey, yeah, yeah, than a stupid human. I guess that's the question, right? Would you rather be a smart monkey? <laughs> Monkeys are smart, like Monkeys already. Are smart, yeah. yeah, just like Menchie over here. What is she doing? She's so intelligent. She's loving her life. <laughs> yeah, no, chim- chimps are already pretty smart, but it's kind of like sad. Uh, because know, humans don't... hold them in captivity, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be tough. Anyway. Let's not get too serious now. Copyright a boo-boo. Next one from Tay. Would you rather work a job that is extremely demanding and exhausting, but very stimulating? Or a job that is low stress, but offers little to no enrichment? I mean, I know I have the unpopular opinion that I will not project onto anyone else other than myself, but I would rather work an extremely demanding and exhausting job that I find stimulating than um, the opposite. I have a lot of trouble just picking one answer for this one. Cause well, like, yeah, no one wants like <laughs> either extreme, but if you're forced into the position where you must choose. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, if I'm answering this, I'm on the cusp of like not knowing how to answer this. Cause like oh. for the first like 30 to 40 years of your life, I think you want to be in the camp of working very hard and being satisfied. And then you retire. But then there's a point <laughs> at which I think that just becomes too exhausting. For sure, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm on the cusp of this one. I don't know how to answer you- well, if you have, you I, have I to still, choose. I still want to work. I still want to work. I'm with you. Okay. I'm just not as on board. So, I'm not rowing so you as hard in that direction you. agree with how we're living you. our lives then. So you agree. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree with how we're living our lives. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next one from Sam. Would you rather fly to Australia or drive to Mexico? All right. Ignore the destinations. I actually think this is more interesting and it's like, would you rather be on a plane for 24 hours? To Australia or drive to Australia? You can't drive to Australia. Right. Would you rather be on a plane for 24 hours or be driving for 24 hours? Is that the distance? It's a 24-hour drive to Mexico from uh, Ottawa, Canada? Very rough approximation, but just ignore the exact numbers. It's just like, would you rather well, be... Well, no, that that actually might matter. <laughs> it might matter. If it's like if, if it's double the length on one travel medium and you have a preference for one or the other it actually might okay. impact your decision i guess i'm making some arbitrary and i don't know how long it's actually going to take to drive to mexico <laughs> no. 24 hours is probably not an insane guess because i think it's like 16 hours from us to fl- if it's if it's less uh, if it's less time to fly to the one destination i would do the flight one okay but pretend it's the same time oh it's exactly the same <laughs> why are you over would you rather be on a plane for 24 hours or in a car driving somewhere for 24 hours? Do we get to stop at all or no? It's like nonstop. Well, you can't really stop a plane. Well, there's layovers. <laughs> okay. I've never heard of a plane that flies for 24 hours straight, but... Okay, know. you can't stop. You can't stop. You can't no stop, stop in the car, then plane. Yes, that yeah. is the right answer, I think. Because I would get way more sick, like physically, if I was in a car that could not stop for 24 hours. What if you're the passenger in the car? Does that make a difference? Because for me, the big difference is like driving is way more exhausting yeah. over time than just sitting on a plane. For sure. But even when I'm a passenger, I would get super sick. Like I, I would get car you sick. You get sick? Yeah. Car sick. Okay. But that's only if you like you look at your phone and stuff in the car. But what right? am I going to do for 24 hours without looking at uh, my phone, Ben? <laughs> talk to me. Make sure I'm staying <laughs> awake while hours I'm driving. Straight. Yeah. <laughs> How long do you think you could drive without feeling bad? What's uh, the longest drive you've ever done? Just to Toronto. <laughs> just like four and a half hours. Four and a half hours. That's, that's, it. It. that's it? That's it. But that's my max. <laughs> I drove from like New York to Ottawa once. Mm-hmm. Was that like eight, eight and a half hours, something like that? And I was like, I don't want to drive any longer than that in one run, I don't think. Yeah. Some people are great at it. I mean, like obviously there's people who work jobs that require them to drive for the entire duration of their shift. And then there's other people who don't normally do that, who find it really hard to mm. drive for long periods of a time. I find it hard personally to drive for long periods at a time. Like I, I you're right. Like if I'm getting distracted or tired, also like it's not safe to be yeah. driving if you're getting too tired. So yeah, I also get kind of sick. I don't mm-hmm. know what it is. Does that happen on planes too? I don't get sick on planes, but the oxygen, not the oxygen, I don't know what I'm talking about. The air quality definitely mm-hmm. gets to me and it like. It's really dry. Yeah, it's really dry and that hurts while, my skin yeah. too. I can feel it in my skin. Okay. <laughs> All right, next one. Sarah Taylor, would you rather know the exact time you are going to die or how you are going to die? I love this uplifting podcast, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, additional note here, by knowing you will not be able to change the fact. It will just be a piece of knowledge you have. Okay, so you can't change it. It's not like the butterfly effect. No, but I think I would still rather know because I feel no, like when? there are things you could do in your life to sort of mitigate 
Well, that. no, you can't change it, I guess is what they're well, saying. I'm not saying you can change the fact, like your death clock is set. Wait, you'd it's, rather it's know, going to happen. know when or know how? I think I'd rather know how. How? Yeah. Oh, I'd rather know when. Really? Yeah. Hard when. You, you want to live the rest of your life knowing... If I knew how, then I would just be too traumatized to deal with whatever is related to how I would die. And I would like live life like <gasps> all the time. But if I knew exactly when, I could enjoy the rest of my life without being scared of how I'm going to die and plan accordingly. Imagine know, like knowing when you're going to die. You can plan your will like so perfectly. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> think Christine's thinking of the logistics of a state law. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, but like, like yeah. I, I think I, there's I, a logical fallacy here though. Like if it says I'm going to die in a car accident and I'm like, okay, I know that now. I'm going to move to the woods where there's no gonna cars. You're never going to go in a car and you'll just live your life like freaked out all the time don't know when but then how have i not changed the outcome of my death if i can literally go somewhere where well, i will never the rules be in a are it's not going to change you will well, someone's going to like kid, kidnap you yes <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen final destination like that's how it works i haven't actually <laughs> it's terrifying i'm scarred from that movie i remember as a kid seeing the trailer in theaters of the logs falling yeah, off the truck I, I and still coming think of through that the windshield yeah every time we drive by a yeah. log truck i is it amazing out. like little cultural artifacts like that have totally imprinted themselves on the brains of like anyone who was our age at that time like yep. i bet if you spoke to a lot of people in our like grade or whatever the logs or the fence scene yeah none I of can, us can I drive can never... behind trucks with a bunch of logs on or, or the fence i can never look the at fence? the barbed wire fence in the same way again without thinking of that scene don't I'm not going to even describe it because it will give people trauma just by me describing it. How often do you see a barbed wire? We should probably just anyway. say, just for those who don't know, Final Destination was like a series of movies that came out when we were teenagers where everyone was like basically sentenced to death and they couldn't escape it. But they were all trying to escape death. Not and then sentenced like, to death well, like a court. But it was like, sorry, not by a court, but just like Someone you know, has fate. a premonition yeah. and they like don't get on the roller coaster because it turns out the roller coaster breaks and a bunch of people die. But then it's like death is coming, coming for them because they escaped yeah. death. And then they die they in all sorts death. of crazy ways. But the crazy ways is what like stuck out in my mind. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Anyways, <How do> you... <laughs> I would much rather know when, not you how. Know when? I don't want to know how. Why do you want to know how? I just think it would be a terrible life to just be constantly counting down to knowing when you're going to die. But instead, you're just going to constantly be aware of the car or heart disease or <laughs> whatever it is that like how you would die i guess i just really reject the idea that you couldn't do anything with the knowledge well no you, you can't as per this question yeah, I, you I, cannot change it i reject the okay. premise it's of the interesting question we had such polar opposite strong responses though hmm. <laughs> agree to disagree all right next one sam would you rather oh you i'm that. going backwards all right next one from tiny letters would you rather have to spend an entire weekend playing ben's favorite video games or spend an entire weekend watching ben's favorite movies is this question for me or for you? Well, how would it be for me? Would I rather just <laughs> would, play would video games watch, or watch movies yeah, all Yeah, I mean, okay, you answer first. Like I can only pick one yeah. until the end of time? Yes. Well, no, this, que this question is clearly weekend. for you. You're I know, deflecting. but I want to hear your answer. Would Probably you rather? if I had to, I don't know. Video movies? Video movies. <laughs> video ben, movies, that's yeah. Thing. Well, Christine, this question is for you. Okay, <laughs> obviously movies, because if I tried to play your level of video games, I would be really frustrating because <laughs> I'm, I'm not good. Good point. It's saying playing <laughs> yeah. Ben's favorite video games. Yeah. What, if it, what if it was watching? You could either watch video games or watch movies. Probably Does that make a movies. Difference? Still movies? Yeah, because I do think your taste in movies, like I find them appealing. Mm. Um, but video games, I just... Uh, like the god of war stuff you were playing i can't get into that one <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. you don't like the last of us no no that, that's more interesting the last oh. of us is, is interesting so it depends on the game yeah, yeah. but I, I if i'm to play them i would probably not be good at it and i would frustrate myself and those around me so can i plan like a 48 hour movie marathon then i, I guess so <laughs> Th thank you tiny letters <laughs> Whoa, whoa, okay, 48 hours of movies. Godfather 1, Godfather 2, Donnie Darko. The Matrix. Scarface. The Matrix. 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> uh, Star Wars, 9 movies. I feel like that's more than 48 hours. <laughs> Donnie Darko again. Uh, <laughs> ben. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, and Oh Hazard, Balthazar. Okay, all there right. Go. Next weekend? <laughs> Next weekend, I'll see you there. All right, from Hafa Rekka. 
Would you rather get another cat or a dog? Menchie, don't listen. <laughs> Cover your little Cover ears. Cover your little ears. <laughs> um, obviously another cat. Yeah? Yeah, I'm the cat lady. I can't imagine us getting another pet during the residency of Menchie and Zyler. <laughs> Yeah, they're so good together, and I, know. I feel like it would imbalance the situation if we got another pet now. I know at one point yeah. we started sort of thinking about a third cat. I, yeah, I just really, I would be so concerned about disrupting the balance of their lives at this point. I feel like they have so much good attention, like, from us and everything, and I just feel like getting a new cat would divert that attention and i know that always happens even when, like when you when people have kids but i just feel like we're happy the way that it is and i mean um, i think we we could give a third animal attention i think yeah, it's more I just, just like kind of feel bad. what if they show up and menchie just hates it yeah the, if the dynamic that's my isn't bigger right, concern yeah i don't want to spook menchie or xyler too like he's clearly like the king of the castle right now mm -hmm. if there was like a power struggle with a new pet that would be a big deal for him. And like, I don't want to stress him out in his Tyler older years. Tyler will always be king. Even if we brought like 20 <laughs> cats in, he would still be like, I'm the boss here. <laughs> I know. Okay. So a, right. another cat though, if I had to choose. All right. Good answer. Uh, Nina Moss to Christine. Would you rather have really short nails, but still be able to wear hollow or have really long nails, but never be able to paint them? Mm, oh my god guys why are you doing this to me so many questions like this by the way everyone this trying is, to punish me i think this is an easy one um yes this is an easy one <laughs> sorry but like a lot of question about like would you cut off your nails and that kind of thing there i would rather those, yeah. i would rather have really short nails but still be able to wear hollow because if i have really long nails and i can't paint them then like what's the point <laughs> for me who likes color and like doing nail art doing nail art <laughs> yeah. I know. but you know um you also don't want to have naked nails so that's really the crux of my position here if i had really long naked nails that i was not allowed to paint they'd probably break and go short so you know i'd rather have short nails and so just, they couldn't just stay paint long anyway the if they were naked yeah, I mean, like, yeah. that's not always true. Some people manage to uh, maintain really long nails without ever painting them. But in my personal experience, having nail polish on helps, like, solidify your nail, kind of like a splint. And it helps prevent your nails from breaking in a way. Not only that, there's other things you can do. But, like, <laughs> nail polish itself okay. kind of helps prevent your nails from breaking. Okay. Yeah. So short nails with hollow, obviously. Cool. All right, next one from Yasmin Marquis. Would you rather lose all your memories up until now or never be able to make new memories, but you can keep the old ones? Oh, this sounds like a movie. <laughs> sounds I feel like a like terrible movie. This concept has been in a movie at some point. Um, this is tough. Do you have like a, a, a quick reaction to this? No. No? Okay, I think I'd rather lose all my memories because if if i yeah <laughs> let me explain yo oh, no yeah, one yeah. wants either of these okay just to be clear like yeah. everyone's gonna be like what i can't believe you but either one is bad obviously but i wouldn't want to be in a position where moving forward i will never be able to retain all the new things that i do in the future because then how do you live your life like how do you proceed right so i'd rather drop everything from a certain point on and then continue as long as you can retain i think that's what this question is basically asking right yeah i i refuse i don't, I don't know why we included this question this is too depressing well, it's, it's interesting <laughs> is it yeah i know you don't think I don't it's think interesting so, okay no. <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh from Ma maganch would you rather live in the states and never be able to move back to canada or never be able to visit the states again how often do we visit the states? Lately, not much at yeah. all. Also, like, there's a whole world outside of the U.S. too. <laughs> no, you there's can still only visit. America and Canada, according to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd rather stay in Canada, like we have stayed in Canada. Yeah, this is easier for us to answer because we don't need to travel that much for things. So we would stay here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a Lus Kun for funsies. The question is for Menchie and Zyler. We have to answer from their perspective. Would you rather be human-sized cats or have Ben and Christine be cat-sized? Menchie, what do you think? <laughs> if if we were if we were cat-sized, I'm pretty sure they would 
kill us. Really? Yeah. I but think if so. we're the same size as them, so it's not like we're smaller than them, so we could take them. Uh -huh, I don't think I could take Zyler. We could definitely take Menchi. Sorry, Menchi. <laughs> She's a but sometimes wuss. she like bites my wait sorry we're pe we're people that are the size of cats yes it's not like we've adopted cat bodies no. right yeah we're it's like honey we shrunk the humans that are now cat sized so like menchi way. sometimes gets like really affectionate and just starts like biting my head yeah and xyler likes like mounting people so it <laughs> just feels like you. even accidentally they could very easily Suffocate kill us, us. Yeah. <laughs> like on our heads <laughs> yeah but imagine menchie and xyler human sized wouldn't that be fun could you like ride them like a horse well they maybe <laughs> but like i feel like we'd be t terrified like the our human selves would be terrified of our cats at our side our size actually th there'd be a way bigger risk of them killing us if they were human sized than us being cat sized probably yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think we all need to shrink. I think we're down for shrinking. We're all, all yeah. <laughs> well, the, they don't need to shrink, but we need to shrink down to their level and see what it's like. It's like the insane people who have like pet tigers and lions somehow, mostly in Florida, but like occasionally you hear about this other places. You have to be out of your fucking mind <laughs> to think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like Tiger King. Yeah, those people were all nuts. <laughs> Menti? super unfair to the animals but also yeah. just like in a totally selfish way like that is a crazy thing to do okay menchi we're gonna shrink down to your size <laughs> what would you do with menchi if you were menchi's size i would cuddle with her you would <laughs> i would love to cuddle her and i'd actually be able to like little spoon her oh you'll be the so little cute. spoon yeah i would just want her to hug me <laughs> she would totally uh, okay <laughs> i love her uh from anna bulk bbb would you rather be the youngest or the oldest sibling Okay, this one's a little more uh, real. So, we I'm to... the youngest, you're the oldest. Yes, we already have bias. Do we? Yes, we only know the experience, we only have the experience of one. Of one. Yeah. Uh, I would rather be the youngest, which oh. I'm currently not. And you? And I'm happy to be the youngest. <laughs> so, the correct answer is it's better to be the youngest. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the middle child's always screwed up. The yeah. oldest. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know statement. that. <laughs> no, like, and the old. Stereoty stereotype is that the oldest goes through things and breaks down barriers for the younger siblings, yeah. right? Has that not been true for your, your brother? Yeah, so that was true for me, which is why I said I'm happy to be. Yeah, and it was true for me too. I mean, that's just a sample size of N equals two, but it is something we hear anecdotally People all talk the time. About this, yeah. That it, it might be easier in most circumstances to be the younger sibling. So we agree that is objectively correct. <laughs> yeah. Is there any advantage to being the older sibling, do you think? Do you feel like it's tough for the younger one to be in like the shadow of the older sibling yeah. sometimes. I yeah. think I've felt that in my mm -hmm. life. Yeah, that can be real too. Um, but it also depends on like how the siblings are together. I think that if the siblings get along and they have a good healthy relationship, then you're going to have less of that. But they're, you're never going to change. It's really hard, I think, for people to change how they raise their first kid versus their, like, second or third. Because so many things about, like, learning the experience of parenting will change over time. Hmm. And that's why you always have the older child saying, what the fuck? I, like, I had so many more punishments or my parents were so strict. <laughs> the or, parents had no like, idea what they were fair. doing for yeah. the first one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Uh, from Brioni, the physics nerd, would you rather always have to get up before 7 a.m.? Or never be able to go to bed before 1 a.m.? Well, we already don't really go to bed before 1 a.m. <laughs> Just that's naturally. True. Like, I don't really fall asleep. Well, we're usually in bed before midnight, but we'll be awake for quite a while. Until and then Xyler will sometimes wake us up at 7 a.m. meowing for food. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, we're, what if both? <laughs> I will say, when I'm feeling my most like healthy, the healthiest lifestyle is one where I'm not going to bed super late and sleeping in a lot, though. Where you're waking up earlier, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's definitely been harder, I don't know, since pandemic. People's hours have changed, so I feel like I haven't been getting up as early either because, like, I don't have to physically go anywhere early. A little harder to maintain a routine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, from Christine Harry, would you rather never use a base coat or never use a top coat, Christine? Oh, my God. Um, this is actually an easy answer. Because I explained this in a video at some point when I did my nails in reverse. While a base coat is good to have if you want to protect against staining, if you have uneven nails, or if you want to peel off your manicure, 
it's not as necessary as a top coat. Like you really need a top coat if you want to keep your manicure on longer. And I find like that's more important than a, a long lasting base coat, for example. And also if you want your nails to dry. The number one complaint I always get is like, how come my nails never dry? Well, you need a good top coat. A base coat isn't really going to change that, but you need a good top coat. So absolutely top coat. Good. I have nothing to add. Do you have it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. You don't have an answer. Uh, from Sound of Wonder. Would you rather never eat hummus again or only eat hummus for the rest of your life? I'm pretty sure this one is for you. No, No? it's for you. (laughs) I don't think you'd want to eat any one thing as the only thing you could eat for the rest of your life, whether this Mm -hmm. was tea or oats Mm -hmm. or anything, because it would take away... The joys. I I could eat hummus every day for the rest of my life. You do eat hummus every day. (laughs) And I will. That's a promise. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I couldn't have that be the only, only food group I eat. Yeah, it would get disgusting after a while. And also nutritionally speaking, like that's probably not ideal to only have hummus. But if you got rid of hummus, you'd be allowed to eat everything else. But that would that'd be really yeah. hard. It would be hard. I would, I would think about it a lot. What if you like sneak a chickpea in? I would Does wanna, that count? I would want to retain all my prior memories of hummus <laughs> and have no memories into the so future. So it depends how you answer that other question in <laughs> yeah. order to answer this question. We'll do it in combination. All right. Uh, from Nutella Ball 2, would you rather only be able to watch the last episode of a series or the first episode? Interesting. Cool. I have an answer. Do you? Yeah. Three, two, two one. one, last. Last. Yeah. Probably for different reasons, though. What's your reason? Well, you like just like, you don't care about spoilers. Yeah. You I'm, just like knowing how things resolve. I have the unpopular opinion if I don't mind spoilers. I guess my answer isn't that different. I just feel it would be so hard to be able to like start a story you're super invested in without knowing how it would end. That would be more frustrating than not knowing the exact beginning of it. Oh yeah. That's exactly why my answer is what it is too, because I find it so frustrating to go without completing something. Like I hate Mm. starting something and not finishing it. Whatever that is in life, I'm kind of always the same way. I need to finish the project, wrap up the show. Unless I'm really annoyed at a TV show. There have been TV shows that I just never finished because I like got tired of it. I'm not saying that's that doesn't happen. But But it's unusual. Like I've known you to finish TV shows even though they had gotten bad just because you want to know. I think this isn't unique to you. I've done this too. Like sometimes you're invested in a show, it's clearly gotten worse over time. But it's hard like to let go of Like The Walking Dead? It. Well, we actually stopped watching that. We actually stopped watching it. Yeah. yeah. But I've, I've actually stopped watching shows. Like The Walking Dead, Westworld was really good. And then I didn't Got finish bad. the last one. Hmm. Um, Billions is another one I never really finished. There's, yeah. there's shows that I like started watching and I really liked them. And then after a few seasons, I was like, I, yeah. Yeah, but when I think of like my favorite shows ever, like yeah, Mad Men, Breaking Bad, it would be so hard to not have the conclusion of those. That yes, would be worse than need, not knowing yeah. the beginning, I think. Yeah, I totally agree. Like I would read the last page of a book first and I would, I also don't mind spoilers. I just want to know how things are going to resolve because, you know, problem solving. <laughs> All right, next one, Katie Wags. For Simply, would you rather never wear nail polish again or never drink tea again? Why do you have to do this to me, Katie? Why are all these terrible? Why? <laughs> Why <are> these <laughs> the worst? Well, that's what's supposed to happen with this game, right? Um, I would probably rather never drink tea again, which is like sounds like an absolute nightmare. But I am not accepting any fate where I'm never wearing nail polish again. Like that's just way worse for me. So I think I would find a substitute for tea i'd have to, maybe i'd like start drink, drinking coffee <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but like i'd find another beverage that would satisfy my you know five times a day need to just like prepare and have something because that's why i find like i like the experience of making tea hmm. um so i think i would just have to sublimate that obsession or desire <laughs> into something else and i would okay. be okay i mean be okay. I, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. This is not happening. But I could never not wear nail polish again. You yeah, kind of happening. faced the possibility of the sphere at one point when you were going through your allergy testing. Yes. Remember mm-hmm. at one point we did it. You did a test that would have shown if you were allergic to common nail polish ingredients. 
Yeah. Or it was about a bunch of cosmetics, but it included stuff that was specific to nail polish, right? Yeah, I had like 90 something patches stuck on my back. This was a couple of years ago now. Yeah. And in each patch, there was a concentrated ingredient from a number of different things. One of the panels of tests they did was for acrylates, which is like the term used for paints and lacquers mm. that include different versions or concentrations of ingredients found in like nail polish. And I specifically told the dermatologist, like, I need to test for that panel. So they did an elaborated panel of that mm. rather than the standard. This is like the second dermatologist I'd seen. I think I've spoken about this before, but people often forget that I went to the trouble of like, I went to a hospital to a really professional, well-known dermatologist in Ottawa who did this. Yeah. Um, and, and this was like the third time I've had these tests and they did a detailed panel on on acrylates and stuff, the stuff that's in nail polish to rule it out because it was incredibly important for me. And my, my job even, that's like how I got into it as well is like, it was part of my business and my work that they were like, it's workplace related for you. Oh, is that why yeah. they did, okay. I mean, I think you could have gotten it either way, but normally if you're just like an average person with sensitivities, they'll give you the standard test, hmm. but they went down, they went through the trouble of doing the more detailed panel of tests for acrylates because it's related to some part of my business. I mean, not like some part of my business. It's like my entire business. Yeah, that but was a yeah. really weird time. Like, obviously, that was super stressful for you, and I feel terrible about it. But I remember it being really strange, thinking like, "Is there? There's this stuff on your back waiting to find out if, like, maybe you shouldn't paint your nails ever." Yeah, again. it was nothing related to acrylates or anything that could be found in nail polish. And we did a lot of cross referencing of ingredients. I even brought in more detailed ingredient lists like from supplier sheets to my dermatologist. Yeah, I remember. Um, but yeah, and, and you know what's really frustrating though is I did all this work, which is like research and empirical evidence and talking to doctors to find out what I'm allergic to, to rule out nail polish. Mm -hmm. And still, even though I've shared this in different mediums, um, like on stream or on Snapchat, or we've said it on this podcast before, people will still tell me randomly like, it seems like you're allergic to nail polish because your eyes are, because I say like my eyes, my allergies are acting up and they're like, it must be the nail polish because I know someone who is allergic to nail polish and their eyes got red and itchy. And it's like, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for, for the fact. <laughs> It's just they're frustrating. Just trying like, to be helpful, it, it, it shouldn't bother me, but it's like so annoying because I it almost feels like those people want to be like, I guess you can't live your dream anymore. And maybe that brings them some kind of satisfaction to say that to another person. But like it's not true. I'm not allergic <laughs> to nail polish. Yeah, we know some of the things you're allergic to, yes, at least. Yeah. And we've done a lot to it's turned into the allergy episode. Um <laughs> yeah. are you comfortable talking about this? Yeah. Yeah, we're not gonna say what, but like we had to go through and get rid of a lot of household products yeah, and, and replace them with versions of them that didn't have certain ingredients you commonly find in like certain cleaning products or household products. And then the right? problem is it's not just ingredients that are listed. It's like trace ingredients because when you have certain sensitivities, your eyes are the most sensitive skin on your body. So even though like the rest of my body isn't necessarily reacting to it, even if it's just something in the air and not because it's not like a cosmetic I'm directly putting on my eyes. And you know that because I'm like never wearing makeup for like two years now. Yeah. It's not something I'm directly putting on my eyes. It's not a skin cream, none of that. But still, because your eyes are the most sensitive, if there's like a hint of it in the air, then the eyes, the skin on the eyes are the most likely to get inflamed. And then they kind of just stay that way because mm. the skin barrier has been pierced or like some language dermatologists use to mm. that effect. But yeah, it's... It's so frustrating because it's not just about ingredients and can be like trace ingredients and things that are not listed because the the concentration is lower than required to list. Yeah, maybe we should move to the woods. No people. Remotely, where no one will no hate products. me and we will have no allergies. Except <laughs> no allergies. you'll still have allergies potentially in the woods. Yeah. I don't know how obvious it is, but my allergies have been bad this <laughs> whole gonna... episode and it's made it hard to participate. Maybe talking about allergies is not helping. <laughs> Menchie, yeah. Menchie, you're causing allergies. I don't think we include this, but I saw someone that said, if Ben's allergies get worse, would you rather stay with Ben or get rid of the cats? Well, that's your decision. <laughs> would I leave? Well, <laughs> if your allergies get worse. <laughs> Clearly, I've chosen to stay yeah. and they haven't gotten, my allergies have gotten worse. Which I just makes did, no sense. I just did like weeks of allergy shots, by the way. Yeah. And I, I did it all the way through where I, you had to do it weekly. And now I'm supposed to be at like a maintenance dose where you only have to do it once a month. I still have really bad reactions to the cats. So clearly something didn't work for me. We need to recalibrate. 
those shots, I think. Yeah. Give I me, think give me need, that a higher They need dose. to redo the tests maybe and make it more specific. Maybe you need like the specific breed of Menchie hair. Bring, bring in a there. sample of Menchie and <laughs> A Zyler's sample of Menchie. Maybe they just have really unique fur coats. Yeah. Or maybe, we, maybe we need to brush them more. <laughs> more than, as the hair flies <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, from Anna, would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on YouTube your life? YouTube rewind. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, this is so easy for me. You, pause, it's pause button, it's right? It's pause, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, do you pause and everyone pauses? When you pause, are you still able to think and do things? Yes, in my scenario. So you're just pausing everyone else. Yeah. Life is I think put I, on yeah, hold. I think I like this more. So you can get a break. I would love to pause the whole world. For I would like, love to pause every the week. Whole world I'd pause too. the world for a week. Yeah. So I'd have two weeks when everyone else has one. Whereas rewind takes you down the weird path of like butterfly effect. Would change the things? past for your future? Yeah. I would rather buy myself more time than go back in time. Yeah, I think that's the objectively right answer. Well, maybe some people want to correct past, mm. you know, mistakes or other people's mistakes to change the course of their life. But um, I don't feel the need to do that personally, but I do feel the need to, like, everyone stop. <laughs> everyone just pause. Yeah. Uh, next one. Esme, would you rather have all the tea in the world or all the oats in the world, Christine? Okay. Well, to compliment my previous answer, um, I, would, I would say all the tea in the world to this because I need okay. to show some love for tea. And I am truly here's how i operationalize this i drink more tea or i have tea more frequently than i have oats in a day i mean you have both daily i have both daily but i have tea more frequently well, yeah, multiple so it's times like the a day. second okay. question how frequently how many times do you have tea per day also i kind of interpret this as like you want the variety of all the different kinds of tea so that's a good reason to have an abundance of tea yes whereas you don't need all the oats in the world i just need one you just oats need a in the world. cup of oats yeah. a day I did, exactly ben yeah so i need all the variety of tea in the world because i do like and i would love an abundance of tea mm. <laughs> it sounds wonderful yeah <laughs> and um i don't need all the oats in the world just a cup a day you know standard standard oats quaker oats whoever quick Doesn't oats matter old-fashioned quick oats steel how do you feel about steel cut oats it's not for me it's it does not. not steal my heart no yeah it's well not you, the, have, not to, right you have to boil those yeah yeah i've trouble digesting steel cut oats why i don't know ask your stomach <laughs> <laughs> all right from freebie queen yeg would you rather get married or have kids you have to pick one are is this your are choice kids cats Human children. <laughs> please it's actually really funny. Please specify. Um, I mean, obviously, it's marriage, right? It has yeah, to be marriage. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> like... <laughs> we wouldn't have human children just so just that so... we can keep saying we're not married. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You can just get married and just kind of forget about I it mean, and not care. I would assume that having kids is an incredibly large decision that impacts your entire future and the future of another human. It's a pretty safe assumption. So it's I a think, pretty yeah. big, big weight, you know, to make that decision. Whereas getting married is just something we don't care about. Getting married is a party and a legal contract. Yeah, and you can skip the party. And you can still, <laughs> you, can and just, you, you can skip the party. Yeah, 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 true. You don't have to have a party. You could just get married at the courthouse and have a legal contract. Um, yeah, like if, if we had to, I would get married over having kids. <laughs> like, if there what? had ever been a legal benefit or anything in our yeah. circumstances to get married, I think we would have just like quietly done that and never told anyone. And like no wearing of rings, no wedding ceremony. If or you anything. say that, people are going to conclude that we're secretly married. Well, you know, leave it up to your imagination. <laughs> People always kind of misinterpret this because they see me as like anti-marriage or something, which I feel like is... And anti-kids. And anti-kids. But, yeah. but like, no, 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 no. That's not true. Um, marriage isn't as important to us because we don't find a particular advantage to being married like a lot of other people do like it's absolutely true that people who are married in the states can benefit from each other's insurance um there's lots of legal good reasons why you would get married and then there's the romantic side of like oh we're married therefore we will be together forever which i mean as a child of divorce uh, i i <laughs> doesn't i can i don't yeah. think that that makes the difference of why people are together longer honestly i don't think the people offended are rejecting the sort of like robotic rational 
it may or may not have a positive consequence in like a legal way or pragmatic way. I think there are people who it's like means a lot to them symbolically and hearing how much it doesn't mean to you just makes yeah. them sort of feel like maybe you're dismissing something that feels really important to them. But the but I don't understand because that's that's <laughs> they they can get married. Yeah. Other people should get married if they want to get married. But if I'm saying it makes no difference to me and I'm cool without it, then why impose your views of how you're not a real couple unless you are married and you don't love each other enough if unless no, you're no, married. No, no, but I think it comes from like that sort of in insecurity. Insecurity of what? Being divorced? Because I've heard people say that about me too. Like must be because our parents are divorced. If being married is a really important thing to you, hearing someone else talk oh, about how yeah. unimportant it is would maybe bother you. I think that's literally yeah, all Yeah, but it it's is. only not important to me personally. Like I have tons of friends and you know, yeah. people in my life who, who are, are married, married or have like, kids and exactly. we're very happy for like, them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not, I'm not anti-marriage or anti-kids. I just like personally, there is no real need for us like pragmatically or, um, you know, more, more symbolically. It's never really appealed to me. Honestly, like there's lots of um, kind of archaic things about marriage traditions that mm. kind of bother me, if I'm being honest, like the whole like the father has to give the bride away and mm -hmm. there's just like things about it that, make me think hmm, yeah it's not it's kind of rooted in just, a tradition of women being treated as property a kind bit. of and i'm not saying that that's how women should feel about it um but because i don't have the other elements around it that make me interested in it it's just another reason that i'm like not interested in it personally mm -hmm. yeah i know unpopular opinion but like w we're good we are good <laughs> are we good we are good <laughs> okay. even though we are not married ben yeah. what if i was the one who like really wanted to get married then we should go on that show, The Ultimatum. <laughs> <laughs> so what, is that great reality TV. give us a chance to date other people to find out if we actually should get married? Yeah, and then that one, was the one show, person right? eventually caves and just does it because they feel like they have no way out and says, fine, I'll propose or whatever. <laughs> that show was wild. <laughs> Wonderful <yeah>. show. <laughs> I don't know about that. Wait, you didn't answer. Oh, yes, you did. You would obviously married. get married, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Maybe we already did. <laughs> uh, from Mooney Linney, would you rather cut your nails short? Or your hair. Can I can I choose both? Man. <laughs> um, which grows faster? I feel like my hair grows faster. Than your nails? Yeah. My nails take a long time to grow. Remember the toenail video? It took an entire year to grow my toenail. <laughs> I think they both take a long time to grow. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, like how short? Um, like the length of my nails. Okay. How short is my hair? Pixie. Pixie? Yeah. You're like Skrillex. Okay, I would cut my nails. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I just wow. can't do it. I can't do it. Horse I, girl I would rather hair. cut my nails because short nails is, is I know everyone thinks like I don't like short nails or something, but like that's not true. <laughs> I, yeah, like, still I like short nails. You can still have fun on short nails. I would still paint my nails short. Whenever I've broken a nail, I made a good use of that time in my life and I did like short nail art or ha like nail hacks for short nails or whatever. I did all that during the times that I'd broken my nails and had short nails. It didn't stop me from painting my nails. Hmm. So just to be clear, you can have awesome nails at any length. Um, and you can, you can be awesome with awesome hair at any length too. Any length? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like so much of my identity is having long hair really? and I, there's been like at least three periods in my online career where I had short nails and like, that's fine too, but I've never had short hair. But you think your, your long hair is an important part of your, I don't even know what the I word is, not. like your self-concept? Yeah, I like my long hair. I'm yeah. I'm sorry if that hurts people. No, no, it's fine. Do you have you do you think your hair could look nice if it was shorter? Not pixie personally. I don't yeah. think I have the face for it. I honestly don't think my face is that Im impressive. <laughs> I don't want to, like, I just, oh, I don't know. I, there's some people who uh, cut their hair short and they pull it off because, like, their face structure is just, like, so good. Or they, they can do really cool eye makeup. I can't wear makeup right now. So I feel like, I don't know, it just wouldn't be the right look for me personally. So I, I like having my hair. But, like, you don't have to, like, shave your head. Like, how, how what's the shortest your hair has ever been? It's been shoulder length like this when I was in grade four. <laughs> Fourth grade? <laughs> Fourth so grade. Far back That's it. Yeah. Oh, Chris, I think you would look good with short hair. Like pixie? 
I don't think so. Yeah, I think you'd look good with a shaved head, I but I'm probably able... not a reliable. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might be a little biased. I need to be able to put my hair up in a ponytail. So as long as it's okay. long enough that I could put my hair up in a ponytail or a bun, I'd probably choose the hair. But if it's so short that it's like like your length, I don't mm -hmm. think I would personally go for that. I'd rather just do short nails for, you know, a few months. <laughs> and it'd be fun. I'd have short nails for a bit. Okay. Uh, next one. Would you rather explore space or the ocean? Mm. <laughs> it's a bit of a different one. So in either scenario, if you take off your helmet, you die. The, yeah, the ocean is terrifying. <laughs> So it was space. Have you ever though. watched like documentaries of people like going deep into the ocean where it's like pitch black and there's all these like freaky fish that like you freaky would think fish. are aliens freaky, if you just saw fish. a picture of them? I mean, have you been to space? Is there freaky things in space? I mean, I guess not. Part of me just thinks the bottom of the ocean is maybe a little bit more scary than going into space in a weird way. It's the pressure that scares me. Yeah, the pressure of the ocean being at the at the bottom. Yeah, something. Well, yeah, I guess there's a huge risk of dying in either case if something mechanically fails. But if you die in space, I think no you, one hears you scream. You, yeah, <laughs> I think you're more likely, just based on the movies I watch. I have no expertise. <laughs> to be rescued by Tom Hanks. <laughs> Bruce Willis will take one for you, and you'll be fine. Yeah. But I think. If you die in space, like if you just take off your helmet, you freeze immediately and you'll just be dead instantly. Whereas in the ocean, you would drown and struggle. I know. I think you'd be like crushed immediately if you were in like a little ship. Although I, I, mean, I hear your you're point. You're in about, a ship now? Or are we like scuba diving? If we're at the bottom of the ocean, you're probably in a little submarine type deal, no? Yeah, but eventually you'll drown. That's kind of the scary part, I guess. Wouldn't if the there's pressure, like a leak in the I think sub. if you're deep enough, the pressure would probably immediately kill you. The pressure of what? Like, what? I'm confused. If you're inside of a sub, and then what happens? If there's a leak in the sub. Yeah, what happens? I was picturing. There's the... a leak and it just crushes you by like the pressure going in. Yeah, and you drown. Or get crushed. I was picturing like walking on the bottom <laughs> of the ocean. Your explodes, I don't know. In my interpretation of this, <laughs> okay. I was picturing like walking on the bottom of the ocean with like a helmet on, or you're just like flying around in space with a spacesuit on. And if you were to die in either scenario, it would probably be worse to be in the ocean walking around with your helmet because then you yeah. all of a sudden can't breathe. Uh, either way, I think dying at the bottom of the ocean is probably worse based on yeah, my I uninformed agree. imagination of it. Because I, I think when people are like deep sea diving, you have to be really careful about how fast you go up and down, right? Because you can get like sickness from the pressure changing, I think. I'm sure there's sickness from pressure in space too, right? I've seen that in movies. <laughs> have you? <laughs> yeah, where they like go into different rooms and you have to like press the pressure. Oh, like thing. depressurize the cabin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess. Okay, so. but I like how we're answering this question based on which one would be worse to die under. <laughs> <laughs> the question was not that. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. The yeah. question was, would you rather explore space? Oh, okay, so or what's the ocean? more interesting? Oh, um, knowing how <laughs> we're gonna we... die. Why that was we... totally my would fault, we... by the way. I don't know. That's <laughs> just where our minds go. Yeah. I would rather explore space because there's less creatures there yeah i'd prefer space because i'm more terrified of the bottom of the ocean because <laughs> you're more scared yeah i'm also scared of space though like i do i have zero interest in going to space do Same. you yeah you don't want to go on rocket x or whatever it's called rocket x. spacex <laughs> SpaceX. i don't know elon might expose himself to me <laughs> on his spaceship <laughs> no i uh yeah i have no interest in space travel me neither i also zero. have no interest in like bungee jumping or jumping out of a plane. Sky skydiving. Yes. Or do you have interest in going to the bottom of the ocean to swim with the fishies? No. Menchie does. Definitely not. <laughs> Menchie's gonna find the shrimps. Only if we could bring back uh, some salmon souvenirs for Menchie. All right. So we would explore space. Sure. <laughs> uh, another from Anna. Would you rather hear the good news or the bad news first? <laughs> I don't like when people hold on to the bad news. Me too. Just it's, tell me the bad news. It's so frustrating when people do that. And when people ask you that question, it's even more frustrating. When people are like, do you want the good news or the bad news first? I'm like, dude, just tell me. Just pick for me and tell me in the order that you know is the right answer. Agreed. Which is, of course, telling the bad news first so that you can be somewhat alleviated when you hear the good news. That was the last one. 
That was the last one? Oh, why didn't you say last one? We, we got the good one last. Good news. The podcast is is over now. All right. Oh, bad news. We're going to release this one? Sorry. I feel like I was off this whole episode because my allergies are driving me insane. That's, that's okay. People have allergies. They know how it feels. Okay. I mean, my allergies are different than yours. Um, I don't have the congestion that you do, and that affects your thinking too. Yeah, it just makes you sort of like feel bad and stuffed up and your head not feel good. So I feel like the first half of this podcast, I just like was barely able to even think about what we were talking about. I heard what you were saying. <laughs> Thank you. I and appreciate I think you. you did well. Thank you. Simply. Yeah. And Menchie is here to give you your allergies. It's all Menchie's fault. <laughs> Menchie. <She's here. laughs> like right beside you in the Why computer. are you right here? <laughs> because she loves you. She's like, don't be allergic to me. Menchie. All right, you want to wrap this up for me? All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you had fun. And uh, feel free to answer your version of answers in the comments down below. And I hope you guys have a happy Taco, Taco Tuesday. Tuesday. We'll see y'all later. Bye.